Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on and stand to your feet and give God a praise this morning. Come on and love on him. Come on and love on him. Come on and love on him. Hallelujah. Come on, let's magnify the God of our salvation on this morning. He's worthy of the glory. He's worthy of the honor. Hallelujah. Today is our day. Any day that the Lord gives us is our day, but today, <laughs> today is our day. Come on and lift up the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. He's an incredible God. He's an amazing God. He's a worthy God. Hallelujah. Come on and love on him. Come on and love on him in the room. Come on, make him know that he's welcome here. Come on, let him know that he is high and lifted up in this place. And we exalt him above all problems, above all circumstances, above anything that is not of him. Come on and give him glory. Hallelujah. 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 Today is Palm Sunday. So we have a reason to celebrate our God. We have a reason to celebrate him sending his son Jesus. Come on. Worship together. Can we be one big worship team this morning? Come on, put your hands together across the room. To this. Water you turned into wine. Hallelujah. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. Hallelujah.
give him a great praise in the room. Come on and celebrate him, celebrate him. Good morning, New Mass family. My name is J.L. Dalsay, and welcome to the New Macedonian Baptist Church, where we demonstrate God's love while discipling God's people. We do that by connecting, growing, and serving. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for letting us come here safely. Thank you. Please grant traveling mercies to those who are still on their way. Thank you that today is Palm Sunday. Please help. Thank you that you sent your son down to earth to die for our sins so that we will we will live forever in heaven with you please help us as we participate in this worship service and that we will love you more in jesus name amen please remain standing for our hymn of the month amen let us sing our hymn of the month he lives christ jesus lives today he walks with me and he talks with me. Let's be one big choir this morning and sing He Lives down in my soul. Let's take verse one. I serve a risen Savior. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that He is living wherever man may stay. I see His hand. I see His hand of mercy. Yeah. 
forget what the Lord has done for me. Now I want you to lift your hands to heaven and say, Jesus, I won't forget. Come on, everybody. Come on, just jump to your feet. You remember it after a while. And let's get a heart going.
done anything for you. If I can get through these announcements. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. I thank you. I know what he's done for me. I don't know if anybody's ever been in the hospital room. Celebrating 28 
years of matrimony. <laughs> and on March 31st, Deacon William and Trustee Mary Mayo are celebrating 17 years of holy matrimony. Y'all excuse it, but I'm feeling mighty good up in here. Right. <laughs> don't forget, don't forget. Don't forget to do your mobile check-in if you not, have not already done so. In fact, while you got your phones out, text a friend, text a neighbor, let them know that we're streaming this service online and that they can join us in worship uh, via our uh, technology. Amen. God bless you. Today is Palm Sunday. Amen. Amen. Today is the last day to register for the college tour to Virginia Union University and Virginia State University, which will take place on Tuesday, March 26th. For more information, contact Reverend Thurm James Jr., our pastor of student life, or Dr. Tanya Hardin. Today, we will uh, collect coins for our Easter egg hunt, which will take place on Saturday, March 30th, after the morning service. <coughs> our student life ministry, members of our student life ministry, will be at each exit, this door, the door by the elevator, and the main entrance, to collect your coins. So, Look in your pockets, check your purse, all your loose change. Uh, we, we, we beg you and we ask you and we request you that you would leave that here in the bucket that will be provided so that we can uh, include them in the uh, Easter egg for our little children. Amen. God bless you. This evening at 6 p.m. via Zoom, the Student Life Ministry presents the spring semester check-in for our college and college-age students. For more information, uh, contact Reverend Thurm James Jr., our pastor of student life. The new growth ministry session begins on tomorrow at 6 p.m. via Zoom. For more information, interested participants may contact the church office. On Tuesdays at 7 p.m., join us for Zumba by Brit in the fellowship hall. The cost is $5 per class and you may register via Realm. For more information, contact Sister Brittany Lee. Amen. Uh, that Zoom is a bit too active for me. <laughs> At this stage in my life, I'm not jumping in too much. <laughs> but for you, for those of you who can, join Sister Britt for the Zoom class. Amen. Amen. A young adult Bible study take place on Tuesdays at 7.30 p.m. via Zoom. The theme, Discerning the Will of God and the Will of God in Your Life. For more information, contact Reverend Thurm James, Jr., Pastor of Student Life. For this week, this week, our food distribution will move from Wednesday to Saturday. Amen? No food distribution this week on Wednesday. It will be on Saturday in conjunction with uh, Resurrection Live. Amen? All right. <coughs> Our Awana Club will meet on Wednesday at 7 p.m. via Zoom. Invite a friend to share and let's mix it up. For more information, contact Dr. Angelo Berry. Also on Wednesday, our TBS, our Teen Bible Study, Who is God? That's Wednesday at 7 p.m. For more information, contact Reverend Thurm James Jr. And then Wednesdays in the Word. On Wednesday at 7 p.m. via Zoom, our pastor is leading us on this great work by Brother John Bunyan <coughs> called Pilgrim's Progress. I'm telling you, we have had a time in the Lord on this study. Amen? Amen. Join us, and I promise you will not be disappointed. Our student life ministry is sponsoring our Easter egg hunt on Saturday, March 30th from 12 to 3 p.m. on the satellite parking lot. We ask that you please donate bags of wrapped candy uh, no later than Thursday, March 28th. For more information, contact Reverend Thurm James Jr. or Sister Lorraine Ruth. 
And next weekend, next weekend, starting on Friday, Resurrection Weekend 2024. Amen. On Friday, for our Good Friday service, we will present the seven attributes of God at the cross. And they will be presented by our sons and daughters of this church. Amen. So let's come and support our own. You don't want to miss this service. And then on Saturday, Resurrection Alive. Sharing an afternoon of community outreach for our family and friends in need of food, household goods, and goodies for the youth. The food and household giveaway while supplies last. Easter story, arts and crafts, games, and an Easter egg hunt for youth 11 years old and younger. Bring your own basket. Amen. And then next Sunday, next Sunday is Resurrection Sunday. Join us, join us, join us in person for Resurrection Sunday for next Sunday. And Pastor has, has, uh, has designated next Sunday only. We will have three services. Don't panic and think we're going back to three services all the time. Three services, Easter Sunday, 7, 9, and 11. Amen. 7, 9, and 11. So don't come at 10 o'clock on next <laughs> Sunday because you'll be in the midst of the 9 a.m. service. You'll be late. Yeah, you'd be early for the 11 o'clock or, <laughs> or late for the 9 o'clock. Either way, you're not going to be on time. So remember, next Sunday, 7, 9, and 11. Now, y'all know I'm not a touch your neighbor preacher. But just this one time, touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, next week, 7, 9, and 11. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Now it's time for us to give. This is the time where we return back to God a portion of that which he has already blessed us with. And as, as we know, we have been taught that the first principle of stewardship is that everything belongs to God. The earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. There is nothing that you have that belongs to you. It all belongs to God. We're simply returning back to him what he has given to us. Amen. I, I, I'm reminded of an old commercial I saw some years ago. Uh, and, and it's relevant to those of us who can't see the importance of giving. Uh, it, it, it was an oil filter commercial by Fram Oil Filters. And uh, uh, this auto mechanic was encouraging people to spend just a little extra for the Fram filter. He, he understood they cost a little more than discount filters. Uh, but, but, but he encouraged him, spend that little extra for the Fram filter to make sure your engine's protected. He said, you can pay me now or you can pay me later. <laughs> and, and something I learned before I understood uh, the importance of tithing is I would, I would hold it back, thinking that I, I couldn't afford that 10%. But then I found that something would always happen, and I'd have to spend that money from this pocket to that pocket, but it was still going out. But then when I started trusting the Lord in my tithes and my offerings, those little nickel and dime issues stopped happening. And that helped me to trust the Lord. So I encourage you, just trust God. Trust him in your finances. Trust him in every, every aspect of your life. Amen. God will not disappoint you. Let us pray. Most holy and always God, our Father, we just want to say thank you. We thank you, God, for these gifts that we're about to receive. It'll be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom, tearing down of strongholds, furtherance of your ministry throughout this, this, this church, this city, and even the world. We love you and we praise you. And we give you all the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless your ushers as you serve.
Father, in the strong and master's name of your wonderful son, uh, Jesus Christ, we come before your presence now. God, we really come as empty pitchers before a full fountain, asking you if you would fill us, God. In fact, fill us till we want no more. We thank you for this wonderful and awesome privilege to be able to gather together once again uh, in the house of prayer to offer praise and supplication unto you. You are our God. We love you with our whole heart. We give you praise and we magnify your name. 
In fact, God, we've lifted you up, but we can even lift you even the higher. Because you said, if I, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. So help us, O oh God, even in the context of this worship experience, to offer to you praise from a sincere heart, from an authentic place. God, that you might receive our praise, that you might receive our worship. Thank you for the wind of your spirit that's blowing in this place. Thank you for the move of God. And now I pray in Jesus' name that you would bless not only these who are gathered in this place, but bless those who connect with us virtually. Bless our families, our children, and our children's children. God, we pray for our neighborhoods, our community, this city, surrounding communities, this nation, and even the nations of the world. So much is happening in the world, God. So much bad news comes our way. But we turn and look to you, our great God. We pray for those who are suffering, those who are hurting, those who are in despair, in hospital rooms, in places of confinement, behind prison walls. Pray in Jesus' name that you would be the lifter of their heads. Pray for comfort now in Jesus' name. We thank you, God. We don't pray just for the sake of praying, not just praying for formality or because it's part of or on the program. But God, we call upon you because we know you hear. God, you hear our cries. You hear our prayers. And we thank you, God, that you're not only a God that hears our prayers. I want to thank you this morning that you're a God that answers prayer. In fact, we've heard testimony this morning of how you answer prayer, how you show up and turn around situations and circumstances. And so, God, this morning we say thank you. In fact, we'll praise you in advance. We'll give your name the glory, the honor, and praise because you do all things well. So we love you today. And we bless you and give you praise. Thank you for this branch of Zion. Thank you for the ministry of the New Macedonia Baptist Church. And I pray in Jesus' name that you would continue to bless us as only you can. I thank you. Count these things done in accordance to your will. We ask you for the forgiveness of our sins. In Jesus' name, amen and thank God. Come on, put those blessed hands together and give God glory in this space. Come on, give the Lord a real praise. It's the Lord is worthy. I said, the Lord is worthy. He's so worthy of our, of our praise. Well, it's good to see you, New Macedonia. It's good to, to see you. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. And we missed you so much on last Sunday. First Lady Priscilla and I traveled up to Trenton, New Jersey, to be with our friend and uh, Macedonia Church, and uh, we're so uh, thankful to be with Pastor Keith Marshall and his wife. They treated us so uh, well, but there's no place like home. Amen. And uh, we're so uh, grateful to God, Pastor Greg Warlow, who stood in my stead on last Sunday. Thank you for receiving him in such a fine fashion on last week as he stood and ministered the word, word of God. I give uh, reverence to God and to his son, Jesus, who is the Christ, and to power and personality of the Holy Spirit of God. I want to thank Pastor Ron for leading us this morning in our worship experience. Amen. Pastor TJ is out preaching. We pray for him uh, this morning as he stands and ministers uh, in this, this hour. But I want to thank uh, Pastor Ron for pinching in uh, for him for the second watch. Amen. To all of our pastors and ministers. Uh, and certainly to our diaconate ministry teams and to all of our ministry teams, your service, uh, even as unto the Lord. Ushers, you can allow our worshipers to enter. Let me acknowledge my amazing wife, First Lady Priscilla. Amen. I want to thank God for, for her and her love that graces my life. On behalf of my wife uh, and the entirety of the women's ministry, all of our volunteers who serve, what an amazing day on yesterday, a gathering event. Um, and uh, I'm so excited about what God is doing through our women's ministry. Amen. Um, the awesome uh, turnout. I want to thank God for our presenters, Minister Chris. Amen. Dr. Tanya. Amen. Saw her earlier today. She's, yeah, she said earlier service. Spoke to her. And, and thank God for Sister Maya. Amen. And uh, we are so grateful for all of you. Wonderful breakfast and all. 
and uh, we pray God's richest blessings to continue to rest upon you. Uh, as has been shared next Sunday, 7, 9, and 11. Amen? 7, 9, and 11. Amen. We'll be here for a three worship experience. Invite someone to share with us. Would you turn uh, in your Bibles, click or scroll, pull up on your app, John uh, chapter 12. John chapter 12 is where our text finds its residence. John uh, chapter 12. Text is rented on this wise, and in verse number 12, the next day the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the King of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, just as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. The crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness the reason why the crowd went to meet him was that they heard he had done this sign. So the Pharisees said to one another, you see that you are gaining nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. I want to tag uh, this text this morning, a reason for your palms. A reason for your palms. Our Father and our God, we thank you that you still use and choose to use the foolishness of preaching to draw men's hearts to repentance. It is our prayer, dear Master, that you use these moments for your glory and for your honor, that the body of Christ will be edified in the name of God, glorified. I pray, God, now that you'll stand in my body, think with my mind, and speak with my lips, and let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, you're my strength, and I am grateful that I've been redeemed by you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and give you praise. Amen. Of course, today is a very uh, special day uh, to um, the church, uh, the Christian community, in fact, the church around the world, because today we begin what we call Passion Week or Holy Week. It's the beginning of the week uh, that marks the final week of Jesus' life leading to the cross that would come, of course, on Friday. His arrest on Friday, the trial, and his beating and crucifixion that's why it's called Passion Week. The word passion refers to the suffering of Christ. Thus, Palm Sunday is not a day of suffering. It really is a day of rejoicing. It marks the beginning of Passion Week. The day was, that day was a day that was unlike any other day. In fact, it was a huge crowd gathered in Jerusalem. Many were there. Uh, in preparation to celebrate the Passover feast. Jesus is going to ride in and remind us in that moment that God is a God that keeps his promise. I thought I'd get more amens than, than that. That God is a God that keeps his promise even when things are at the lowest point. When Israel was about to throw in the towel, Jesus riding in triumphantly reminds us that God keeps his promise. And Jesus is, 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 is coming in, and, and he reminds us of this truth, and maybe that's what's relevant for us in this moment, that, that maybe you're here today, and you're down and in the dumps. You're discouraged, and maybe you feel like you are about to throw in, throw in the towel, um, and, 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 and you don't know which way to turn, don't know what to do. You, you, throwing the towel as it relates to your marriage, throwing in the towel as it relates to your, your future, throwing in the towel as, as it relates to this season in your life. Well, I, I want to tell you that God is a God that still keeps his promise. Listen, God has a message for you today. His word comes to you in this moment because I've discovered that sometimes God doesn't change our circumstance. 
Maybe, maybe, maybe for you, God is not going to change your circumstance. Maybe God is going to change the perspective on your circumstance. Maybe God, in the midst of what you are going through, is going to ride in and allow you to get a glimpse of his glory, and therefore you have a whole different outlook on what you're going through. So, 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 so the question is, is asked or raised in this moment, why, 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 why palms on Palm Sunday? Is there a reason for, for the palms? I mean, uh, what's up with the palms? In, in fact, I almost tagged this text. What's up with, with the palms? I mean, one, one reason um, that uh, you get palms on Palm Sunday um, just be real honest with you is because your pastor got palm on Palm Sunday when he was a kid. When I was a little boy growing up in church the Sunday before Easter, Palm Sunday, uh, my home church gave out palms. And that's the reason why I make sure you get palms. Because when I was growing up in church, we got palms. We, we used to play with them palms. Use it as a whip. Sword fight. Lee looked forward to Palm Sunday. Got fancy and would make crosses out of them. We would use them. Mama would make sure we brought our palms home on Palm Sunday because she would hang them on a calendar. Y'all ain't saying anything. I didn't understand then, as perhaps as much as I understand now, that there is a significance to the palms. But the number one reason, or at least the first reason, not number one, but the first reason I offer to you is because that's what we've done out of tradition. We've given, we've given palms. But I really want to get more in depth than just that out of tradition. Because I want you to see that there is some significance behind it. Let me just say this, when it comes to Palm Sunday, it speaks of the triumphant entry of Jesus into the city of Jerusalem. When we talk about this event, it is recorded in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. All of the gospel writers include the triumphant entry of Jesus into Jerusalem. In fact, our discussion starts here in John chapter 12. Jesus was in Bethany the night before. There was a feast at the home of Lazarus, a house party, if you will. Lazarus, Mary, and Martha. Now, you remember Brother Lazarus, don't you? That, that's the one who was raised from the dead after he had been in the tomb four days. He's having a house party to celebrate. If you've been dead for four days, I guess you want to have a house party, too. And it was at the party, Jesus was there, Mary took some perfume, very, very expensive perfume, and broke it uh, all over uh, and anointed Jesus, his feet. And, and, and the house, the Bible says, was filled with the fragrance. Judas was upset, and, and he says to her, why wasn't this sold and the money given to the poor? Years' wages was found in that little bottle of perfume. It was valuable. It was rare and expensive. And she just broke it and anointed Jesus with it. And so jo Judas scolded her, but Jesus said, leave her alone. L let her alone. See, we understand now that Judas was concerned about the selling of this perfume, not because he was concerned about the poor, but Judas was concerned about lining his own pockets because the Bible tells us that Judas was robbing the treasury. And so Judas was, con Judas was concerned that this bottle of perfume could have been sold so he can line his own pockets. He didn't care anything about this money. He was only concerned about fattening up the treasure so that he can skim off the top. But Jesus had been honored by Mary and then he comes into the city the next day from Bethany, which is east, about two miles away from Jerusalem. So there's the crowd of people that are coming from Bethany because they hear about Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. There's a, you know, kind of spillover from the party and the celebration. 
And then there's a crowd over there in Jerusalem that have also heard about what this Jesus of Nazareth have done, and now they're coming as well. And so we have in this moment a converging of both of the crowds to greet and to meet Jesus and to offer celebration not only for his great works, but they are finally convinced that he is the promised Messiah. So what's up with, with, with the palm? Let, let me let me just tell you that they they have they have significance. In fact, there are three reasons. It's always three. There are three three things that these palms represent. And we learn these things, and if we learn these things and understand them, we can have a fuller meaning of the significance of Palm Sunday. Let me give you this first one because I feel like I'm worrying you. First of all, these palms represent celebration. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not, I'm not one of those touch-your-neighbor preachers neither, but can you just say celebration? <laughs> listen, I, listen, I... It, 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 it had always been known and practiced, and a known practice to God's people and to the people of the ancient Near East. When you're going to have a celebration of any magnitude, when there's going to be a parade, when there's going to be some kind of victory celebration, you use whatever is available to you to hail and to celebrate, to applaud, usually king when they come, the kings when they came back in victory, they would have some kind of celebration of this magnitude. You would cut down the palms from the palm tree. They were plenteous in that area and, and the palms were used sort of like our modern day pom poms. They were used like our modern day flags and banners. You, 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 well, y'all haven't been to a Super Bowl parade in a long time. <laughs> but you've seen Super Bowl parades on television. You, you've seen when the crowds get in all of their merchandise and regalia and they are from head to toe and waving banners and flags and celebrating the victory that has been won. They celebrate the victory who have overcome defeat and now they are returning triumphantly. Well, this is the image, this is the picture that is painted here. John tells us that they pulled down branches and they were celebrating. I, I, I want somebody to see this because there's a great rejoicing when Jesus comes into the city. John chapter 12, verse 15, quotes Zechariah chapter 9, verse number 9, where it says, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming. Seated on a donkey, it's called Jesus came on a donkey, the beast of burden, to symbolize his coming in peace. But let me just say this parenthetically, because Re Revelation chapter 19 says when he comes back again, he ain't going to be riding a donkey, he's going to be riding a white horse. <laughs> yeah, and when he rides that white horse, he's going to be riding it in righteousness as he judges and wages war in the final battle. But here we have what Zechariah 9 and 9 says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. In fact, shout in triumph, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming. I thought I had one or two witnesses understand that this symbol of celebration, that you and I are to greatly rejoice because our king has finally come. We are to celebrate his presence and power in our lives. That's the reason why I get uneasy when folk come to church and don't want to celebrate. When folk walk in after having a week like we had, with all of the bad news and all the hell you had to go through, you mean to tell me that you don't want to celebrate and whatever I can get in my hands, whatever I can pour out from my heart, I am going to lift up the marvelous and wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ because he is my king. Come on here, somebody. See, when you understand the concept of victory, you can embrace the concept of celebration. It's a, it's a celebration. Hosanna to the son of David, which speaks of the messianic role 
Anytime you call Jesus the son of David, you're saying he is Messiah. This is the presentation of the Messiah. The people have been, they've been waiting for the Messiah. In fact, they've been waiting since the fall. Lord have mercy. Way back in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. There, 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 the Lord said, there is coming one who will be born of the seed of a woman. Uh, it's good news, I tell you, that God keeps his promise. That's the reason they are celebrating. That's the reason they are rejoicing. That's the reason they are shouting. That's the reason they are waving their palms. Because Jesus Christ comes as a promise kept by God. Anybody in this room today can celebrate that God keeps his promise? Anybody in here can celebrate that God honors his word, that there's not one promise that God has made that he has not fulfilled. And because God is a God that keeps his promise, I'm going to celebrate. So what's up with these bones? Yeah, yeah, they represent celebration. You and I come to the house of the Lord. That's the reason David made this declaration. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. It's a celebration. But not only, not only, not only do the palm branches, the palm branches represent uh, uh, celebration, they also represent salvation. See, see, when, when, when they were saying, when they were saying to Jesus, Hosanna, and that, that's from Psalm 118. And we know that Psalm 118 is a messianic psalm. They, they, knew, they knew what they were doing. They knew that they were ascribing to Jesus that you are the Messiah. And we welcome the Messiah. We Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes, Lord have mercy, in the name of the Lord, even the king of Israel. Hosanna, Hosanna, that word, it's kind of a prayer. It means save now we pray. That, that, that's, that's what Hosanna means. It's save now we pray. And, that, and that's why they were saying to Jesus, Lord, come and save us. Save us now we pray. They are crying out Hosanna because finally we're going to find deliverance from the yoke of the Roman Empire. Finally, we are no longer going to be uh, the, the boot, amen, but now we're going to be the head. We're no longer going to be on the heel of the boot of, of the Roman Empire. and We no longer have to deal with their oppressive ways, their high taxes. We no longer have to deal with their, uh, with their injustices, no longer have to deal with their brutality. We can finally live in freedom. We can finally enjoy the peace and prosperity that your children deserve. He now comes and they yell out and they exclaim Hosanna they pray Lord save us it was a praise it was, they were praising him for salvation and deliverance but yet need I remind you this morning that that's not the reason Jesus came in the sense that they were thinking he did not come for a political revolution he, he, didn't, he didn't come to overthrow, if you will, the Roman Empire. He came that their souls might be saved. That their lives would be transformed not from the outside in, but from the inside out. I need one or two of y'all to get this part of the message because this is significant for you to understand. Because we do all we can to work on people from the outside in. But we have been called, Lord have mercy, to speak truth to power, yes. We've been called to transform and tear down systems, yes. But it will only take place from the inside out. Uh, amen, somebody, because you can put all the laws you want to on the book, but if a man's heart is evil, it's still evil. You can write all the legislation you want, but if a heart and mind is evil and have intent, they'll figure a way around it. Y'all ain't saying anything about that, but I'm telling you what I already know, but I stopped by here to remind somebody, if lives are changed from the inside out, if people learn to trust in God and love God with all their heart, then we won't see all the problems that we have in our society and our culture, because Christ has come to save us, not from the outside in, but from the inside out. Uh, 
Here it is, salvation. Salvation is deliverance from the power and penalty of sin. And notice here, that Jesus, Jesus comes for deliverance of these people. Deliverance of these people, but not the deliverance that they thought. And here it is. These, these palms represent salvation. They, they represent Messiah, Yahshua, has come. The deliverer of Israel has come. Uh, you know, see, uh, Israel's, Israel, Israel is living under the occupation of Rome. Israel's under the thumb of Rome. Rome is the big power. Uh, amen. Not Israel. I mean, Israel was, 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 was big back in David's day and back in Solomon's time. But this, this, ain't, this ain't Israel's heyday. They are living under subjection of, of, of the Roman Empire. And when Messiah comes, what is he going to do? He's going to give us the strength and the authority to, to have a political deliverance, a monetary deliverance. We are going to be set free. And I think that there's so many of us today miss the reason that Christ has come to give us liberty from those who oppress us. But it really starts from the inside out, not the outside. Salvation, salvation, sal salvation. Well, let me give you this, this, this last one. And then I promise I'll let you get the brunch. The, the, did you get the first one? It's a celebration. King has come, so we, we celebrate. This king is our deliverer. He's delivering. He's bringing deliverance. And so, so we, we, we wave our palms. The final one is exaltation. Palm, these palm branches, these palm represents, represents exaltation. You remember I told you that the palm branches in ancient, in ancient of days were like these palm palms and these merchandise and all the signs and flags that we wave. They're yelling Hosanna. But, but they also serve in a very real sense as red carpet. Red, red carpet. Yeah. Matthew's gospel says it this way, and most, and, and most of the multitude spread their garments in the road, and others were cutting branches from the trees and spreading them in the road. Yeah. They were, <laughs> in a very real sense, rolling out the red carpet for yeah. Jesus. Uh -huh. I need you to see that. I need you to get that. It's, it's, uh, it's award season. Many of you are watching the, the, the wards, and, and some of you just tune in to see who's wearing what on the red carpet. Many of you get, get excited because there's something about the red carpet experience. There, there's something about having all eyes and attention on the red carpet. Here they took these branches and they laid them out on the roadway that, that, that Jesus, Lord have mercy, would have a red carpet. In fact, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The text says, even the king of Israel. They are saying in a very real sense, the king is coming. <laughs> Roll out the red carpet. It's a symbol of honor as they lay down their palm branches. You remember this concerning the Lord Jesus, that he is worthy of all of your honor because he is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. So he ought to be exalted above everything else. I, can, I want to tell somebody, I want to tell somebody here that there's a difference between true followers of Jesus uh, yeah, yeah, and those who are just fans. There's a difference between fans and followers. See, see, in the upper room, there were 120 followers. Amen. Jesus administered three and a half years, and, and there was only 120 up in the upper room because uh, 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 it's a big crowd on Palm Sunday. There are a whole lot of people shouting and celebrating at the red carpet. There are a whole lot of people there and celebrating when you're riding high. 
Oh, but the numbers thin out on Good Friday. The numbers thin out. Y'all ain't saying nothing in this part of the message, but I need one or two of you can testify. When everything is going well in my life, I got plenty of friends. When I got money, I got plenty of friends. When I'm riding high, I got plenty of friends. But let me experience a down season in my life. Let me experience a hard season. That's when they run out on you. But I stop by here to remind somebody, don't get caught up in your red carpet experience. Okay, no, don't, don't, get, don't get too caught up in your red carpet experiences. Text says, text says, Hosanna to the son of David. Yeah, go Jesus, go Jesus, go. There he is. There, there he is. I, I see him. I, I, see, I see him. I see them. They, it, we're going to overthrow the Roman Empire. We, we're going to kick them out. Hosanna to the son of David. Oh, yeah, it's Sunday. Everybody's shouting. But come Friday, them same folk going to talk about nail him, nail him, crucify him, crucify him. Them same folk who are yelling Hosanna on Sunday will cry out crucify him on Friday. They wanted Messiah to do what they wanted him to do. And you know that's the way folk are today. They want a God on their own terms. They, they want a God that they can bring down to their level. They want a God that they can control. They want a God, Lord, I feel like preaching. They want a God that, that will acquiesce to their desires. But I stop by here to remind somebody this morning that that's not the kind of king that we have. We don't have a king that is fickle and frail. We have a king that is worthy to be lifted up and worthy to be exalted. And because he is not fickle and frail, therefore we ought not just be fans, but we ought to be followers. We ought to put our all and trust in him and know that he is high and lifted up. Okay, I'm done. That's all I have for you this morning. Did you get the first one? We have these poems. What's up with them? It's a celebration. It's, it's, it's a celebration. It's a celebration. Yeah, we celebrate because of him. But not only do they represent celebration, they also represent salvation. And they also finally represent exaltation. That's, that's it. That's all I have. But you may have noticed over and over again, I kept talking about this metaphor, this running theme in this text about king. Because he is king of kings and he is lord of lords. That means we rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. It means that we rejoice in the salvation that he brings. It means that we lay down our lives and we exalt him above everything. I was playing a game the other day, Pastor Barry, on my iPhone. I know you got an iPhone now. And you, you don't know this, but you can download certain games and on, your, on your iPhone. And I was playing because I've always been a fan of that game Tetris. Y'all know that game Tetris? There's an iPhone game called Wood, uh, Wooden 100. And it because you can, you can put, you can drop squares into squares and line them up and turn them that way. And so when I have moments that I got to reflect and restart and reset, I pull out my phone and I'll get my wooden 100 and I'll play it. And I was on my way to having my high score. Those of you who know anything about playing games, you know it's important when you get your high score. You don't, you don't want to be distracted. You don't want to be deterred when you're on your way to getting a high score. And I was on my way to getting a high score. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, my game was interrupted. My game was interrupted. And it was one of those ads. <laughs> yeah. Why are y'all looking at me in that tone of voice? <laughs> it was one of those ads. And I don't know, I know y'all so holy, you're so spiritual, you don't know what I'm talking about, playing any games on the phone. We ought to have a more serious uh, pastor than that. But I was playing the game on the phone, and an ad popped up. And the ad came up, and it's talking about one of the most popular games now to be played because they wanted me to download that game, but I ain't even finished playing this game. And so the, the, the advertisement was for a game called uh, Royal. 
Royal Match. Yeah, that's it, Royal Match. Some of y'all heard of that game, Royal Match? You know, you're looking at me that you know what I'm talking about? Okay, Royal Match is one of the most popular games now on, 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 on smart devices. It's a very popular game, Royal Match. Royal Match is a game that this king by the name of Robert, King Robert, finds himself in all kinds of dilemmas. King Robert finds himself in all kinds of situations. I'm watching this as I'm anxiously, anxiously trying to get back to my game, but now I'm amazed because King Robert, he's a king, got a crown on. King Robert, he got royal garb on. King Robert, but King Robert is running. Why in the world is King Robert running? He's running from water. <laughs> then he clips and he stops running from fire. <laughs> then he's stuck in a pipe. <laughs> and then he's about to be pierced. <laughs> it looked like everything. And what's interesting, because they got a hand that shows you that if you can just move Robert fast enough and move King Robert around enough, your hands can save King Robert. I immediately said, that ain't a game I want because I don't need any king that requires my hands to be saved. I don't need any king that I got to come to the rescue. I'm trying to get out here on this part. I don't need any king that need me to get him out of trouble. Is there anybody this morning stuck by new mass and say, I came to give him glory? Because my king gets me out of trouble. My king is my deliverer. My king is my way maker. My king is my salvation. Say yes. Is there anybody in the house this morning that give him glory? Give him honor. All hell the power of our king. King Jesus. Lily of the valley. Bright and morning star. King Jesus, wheel in the middle of a wheel. King Jesus, is there anybody here that give him glory? In fact, you ought to wave your palms and celebrate your king. You ought to wave your palms and hail, hail him. In fact, I wish I had somebody that'll say, Ride on, ride on, King Jesus, ride on. King Jesus, ride on, ride on, ride on, King Jesus, celebrate, these palms <laughs> represent celebration, the, these palms represent salvation, but these palms also represent exaltation. We lift him up. We lift him high and above every circumstance, every situation, every condition. He's our king. He's lifted up high. In fact, he's king of kings. He's Lord of lords. Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the eternal truth of your word. I pray your word falls on good ground. I thank you that you're a king that comes to our rescue. I thank you, a king, that you're a king that is our salvation. And I pray the word in Jesus' name. Accomplish everything you intend for it to accomplish. I thank you. Amen and thank God. Doors of church open. The invitation is being extended to some man, some woman, some boy, some girl. Invitation is being extended today on this Palm Sunday. I want to invite you. I want to invite you, my brother. I want to invite you, my sister, <laughs> to receive him, the King of Glory. Mm. Thank you, God. To receive him, to receive him. Is there one today? Here I am, Pastor Walker. I, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to surrender my will to him, my way to him. This Palm Sunday, it's about, it's about celebration. It's about salvation. It's about exaltation. That's what the palms celebrate. That's what the palms represent, rather. That's the meaning and the significance behind them. 
the fact that our king is worthy of celebrating that our king has brought salvation because he's brought salvation we exalt him is there one today that would respond to that truth just come say it again choir there's nothing better than knowing Jesus my 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 God it's sweeter, sweeter. It's sweeter as the day. Sweeter as the the day, day go by. Go by. There's, there's an invitation being extended to you, my brother, my sister. Get to know him. Even now. Right now. Come on, new mass. Let's make it real big. Let's compel dying men and women to come. Yeah. Come on, everybody. Come on. Somebody's near next to you. Tell them, I'll walk with you. You don't have to be ashamed. You don't have to be embarrassed. You don't have to be shy. Come on, come on. Give God praise for his word. Hallelujah. There's a reason for our poems, but not just on Palm Sunday, but every day we're to be reminded that our king is worthy of celebration, that our king has come to bring salvation, and that our king should be exalted above all. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank God for you. Aren't you glad you came to church this morning? Come on, aren't you glad you came to church this morning? God bless you. I thank the Lord for each and every one of you. Don't forget, uh, on uh, Good Friday evening, this Friday evening at 7 o'clock, we'll be here. Our own sons and daughters will share uh, in interesting uh, spin on Good Friday. We're looking at the attributes of God on display at Calvary. Amen. And uh, we encourage you to come and to share uh, with us. Amen. And I know that the Lord will bless you real good. Let's come and support our own ministerial staff and team here. And then, of course, Sunday will be in worship 7, 9, and 11, Resurrection Alive on Saturday morning. We have already have an army of volunteers, but if you want to volunteer, we'll ask our students, those of you uh, who need um, service project hours, to please uh, check with uh, Pastor Thurm. This is a wonderful time to get service project hours uh, for uh, your um, requirements for school, amen. Uh, and so this is one of the largest outreach events that we have all year. And we're excited about what God uh, is doing. Our young, uh, we're receiving on behalf of student uh, ministry, uh, student life ministry, ask if you have some coins, amen. Just see what you got in your purse or your pocket, coins now, amen, so that we can fill and, and, and uh, um, uh, one of our workers reminded me, he said, we take quiet money too, Pastor. I said, okay. You'll get that in a moment. Amen. So so um, whatever whatever you have, you want to give. So we like to have something for, for our kids when they do the Easter egg hunt. Amen. We won't put something in them, in, them, in them. Say amen, somebody. All right. So thank you so very much. Those of you who came prepared to do that, God bless you. And uh, heaven smile upon you. Come on, Pastor Ron. Dismiss the uh, first-time guest. Would you meet me in the Welcome Center? First-time guest in the Welcome Center. Amen. Thank you. you can, in fact, you can go right now because me and my wife are about to go. And I want you to go to the Welcome Center right now if you're here for the first time so that we can meet you and greet you. All right. Thank you. Also, if you invited, if you invited a guest, if you have a guest with you, uh, we ask that you take them to the Welcome Center as well. Amen. 
uh, to our student life ministry. We ask that you get in place now. Uh, Sister Maddie's on that door. They have their buckets. Uh, don't forget, dig in your pockets. Dig deep. All the loose chains that you have. It has been brought to my attention. Is Sister Anika Nixon in the congregation? If, is Sister Anika Nixon, if you are here, uh, come see me after service. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, what a time. What a time. What a time. Amen. Amen. Let's praise the Lord. Now, now you know the significance of the poem. You know what's up with the poem. Let us look to the Lord. What's holding on was God, our Savior. We just want to say thank you. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the uh, message that we heard on today. We pray that it would touch our hearts, touch our minds, touch our very understanding. That we would have a deeper understanding of you. And we thank you for the words. We ask that you would replenish into pastor that which he has poured forth into us. <clears throat> Bless this congregation. Keep them safe on the roads and the streets and the highways as they go to their various homes and destinations. We love you and we praise you. Now unto him who was able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior, the glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Let the church say amen. 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 God bless you. tell you that God loves you just the way you are, that God has a plan and purpose for your life. You and I were born into this world sinners separated from God, but because of God's unfailing love toward us, he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for our sins. And if you would accept him into your heart, he will live in you and through you and perfect his plan and purpose for your life. Listen, perhaps you're already saved and you need a church home. Listen, I would love to be your pastor. New Mass would love to be your church family. So in either case, would you feel free to text us at 202-759-0009. That's 202-759-0009. Or you can call our church office during normal business hours, Monday through Friday, 9 to 5, 202 583-5555-202-583-5555. If we can assist you and serve you in any way, and particularly to help you navigate your spiritual journey, we will be delighted to do so. Again, know that I love you, New Mass loves you, but above all, God loves you. We'll see you next time.